Well, a warm welcome to this talk. It's Saturday the 1st of April. Now, I want to look at the World Health Organization guidelines for vaccination have changed in the past few days. Do we hear the sound of backpedaling from the World Health Organization in terms of COVID vaccination? Not exactly, but let's look at it and see what they're actually saying. And um, some of the things that they say here are actually quite uh, incredible. But it's the World Health Organization, so um, it must be right. So let's, let's look at the material that they're giving us now. So here we see um, SAGE update. This is, their, this is their scientific advisory group of experts, I believe they call it, on COVID-19 um, vaccines. Now, note these are experts, so uh, we can trust fully what they are saying. We would certainly hope because they're World Health Organization uh, experts. Strategic advisory group of experts. Yeah, that's what they call it. Experts. Experts, of course, are people who are remarkably good at something and know lots about it. So we just have to sit there and say, thank you, great experts, for giving us the benefit of your expertise. Uh, so let, let's get that benefit now. Um, revised roadmap for prioritization of the use of COVID-19 vaccines to reflect the impact of Omicron and high population level immunity due to infection and vaccination. Well, quite seriously, this is actually really good news. Here we see the World Health Organization at least admitting the existence of natural immunity, which is a step in the right direction. Now, I know this sounds absurd, but quite a few governments around the world, you still don't really hear government officials in the UK talking about uh, natural immunity. Unfortunately, even though we know natural immunity is dead good and saves us from lots of other diseases. So population level immunity due to infections and vaccinations, I'm welcoming that, welcome that as a positive uh, admission of the obvious, uh, blatantly obvious from the World Health Organization. You might say it's a little belated, but hey, you know, we can only report what they're currently saying. The roadmap newly considers the cost effectiveness of COVID-19 vaccines for those at lower risk. Is this the backpedaling that we're hearing now? Could be, could be a little bit. Let's go on. Uh, now, namely for children and adolescents, which of course are at much, much lower risk of severe disease. Very, very low risk, especially when you combine the high levels of immunity that are currently around. Revised roadmap re-emphasised the importance of vaccination those still at risk of severe disease, they say, mostly adults and those with underlying conditions. Now, this is the chair, uh, Dr. Hannah Nonek of the, uh, of the uh, World Health Organization. Countries should consider their specific context in deciding whether to continue vaccinating low-risk groups. Could be a message here for countries like, uh, oh, let me think, uh, the United States, for example, that are still advising children over the age of six months to be uh, vaccinated. Um, so m maybe this might be of some benefit to the decision makers in the uh, United States. Let's, uh, let's hope so. Like uh, healthy children and adolescents, while not uh, compromising the routine vaccines that are so crucial to health and well-being in this age group. Now, this is serious, dead serious now, a really important point about this. It, it points out that routine childhood vaccinations such as polio and measles have been lacking over recent years. Now, these are wretched diseases. Polio is a terrible, debilitating disease. Measles kills incredible amounts of children all around the world still, mostly in the poor world context. And to miss out these childhood vaccinations is a real threat to the life of these young people. And the idea that a COVID vaccine has somehow taken priority over a polio vaccine or a measles vaccine I would find um, strange, but it, it looks like it has done over the past couple of years, unfortunately. So we very much agree that these routine childhood vaccinations are absolutely uh, essential to community health and individual health. High priority group. Now, of course, in the high priority group, they go through the usual suspects that we, you know, people would expect, the elderly, the uh, people with comorbidities, diabetes, obesity, etc., uh, which we could argue about, but we're not going to at the moment. But then they actually say that healthcare workers should be uh, boost. That healthcare workers should be a priority group. Here, healthcare workers, we're talking about young, fit, working age people, obviously by definition. Um, some not so young, of course, um, but but, <laughs> um, but basically, it's it's working age people. They're very often young. 
very often incredibly healthy. And here we have the World Health Organization seeing these, pe these people should be boosted. And well, healthcare workers have been exposed to the virus so many times, perhaps on a daily basis for years, their natural immunity and the mucosal compartment immunity will be in place. And yet we have the World Health Organization saying these people should be uh, boosted. Um, well, there you go, saying they should be boosted. Now, of course, I've talked to many colleagues who are healthcare workers and uh, over the past years, and we've debated this matter. But here's the World Health Organization guidelines. Uh, high priority group, frontline healthcare workers, including young, fit, athletic healthcare workers. They don't differentiate. Um, now, of course, this is a family channel. We don't use bad language, no matter how much we are tempted to do so. But that's the World Health Organization guideline. Uh, that their SAGE group recommends an additional booster either six months or 12 months after the last dose. For young, fit healthcare workers who've had multiple exposures, this is the recommendation from the World Health Organization. And you know what? We're not allowed to disagree because it's the WHO. Let's hope there's no vested interest in their uh, decisions. Uh, medium priority group, healthy adults, uh, unusual under the age of 50 to 60 without co comorbidities. And then they say this, although additional boosters are safe for this group, SAGE does not routinely recommend them. So this was published towards the end of March 2023. And here we have the World Health Organization saying boosters are safe. Boosters are safe. Now, as I've already clarified, we don't use bad language on this channel, so we won't be using bad language on this channel, no matter how much we are tempted to do so. Here we have the World Health Organization, <laughs> despite all the evidence, saying additional boosters are safe and we can't disagree. OK, low priority group, healthy children and adolescents aged six months to 17 years. Primary and booster doses are safe and effective in children and adolescents. Well, it looks like even the CDC and the FDA and the, uh, the UK authorities got this wrong, that there's not a risk of myocarditis. Because safe to me means safe. So there doesn't seem to be... We've all got it wrong. There appears to be no risk at all from these vaccines in young, healthy, fit male adolescents. There is no risk at all to give this vaccine to young men who are otherwise perfectly healthy. It's safe to do so. We know that's true because the World Health Organization is saying so. Sorry. Primary and booster doses are safe and effective in children and adolescents. That's what the World Health Organization is telling us at the end of March 2023. Sorry, I'm calm again now. Well, I'm not. I'm, I'm hiding it. That's what they're telling us now. Public health impacts of vaccination health, health of children and adolescents is comparatively much lower than the established benefits of traditional vaccines in children. Now, again, we agree these traditional vaccines are not adenovirus vector vaccines. These traditional vaccines are not messenger ribonucleic acid vaccines. They are attenuated or dead antigen, which, of course, is what we've been protecting our children with for generations now. Let's hope there's no conflation of these two ideas because they are completely separate. Vaccinating pregnant persons, including with an additional dose of dose, if more than six months have passed since the last dose protects both them and the fetus. Now, uh, vaccination of pregnant persons, what the heck are the World Health Organization talking about here? M maybe they mean pregnant women, but of course we don't know because they say pregnant persons. But doesn't it show what a virtuous organisation the World Health Organisation is because it doesn't want to insult anyone? Um, personally, I prefer clarity of communication. So I think it's talking about pregnant women, but we'll never know for sure because it doesn't say that. We only know what the World Health Organisation actually says. Vaccinating pregnant persons, an additional dose protects both them and the foetus. So again... Despite any data you might have heard about, it looks like you were completely wrong. Um, vaccinating pregnant um, persons um, isn't, a, isn't a problem. In fact, it is recommended by the World Health Organization. 
Other meeting highlights included, and here, here, here seriously, oral polio vaccine. I mean, you go into any village um, in India, for example, and um, there's these terrible children with polio form uh, deformities. Um, it really is a tragic illness and should have been eradicated decades ago. It's such an indictment on humanity that along with smallpox, polio is not confined to a historical curiosity. Um, so polio vaccine, no, I'm not saying it's without risk, or, or polio vaccine can have transmission risks, of course. But um, basically the polio uh, campaign should have been finished uh, a couple of decades ago, and it's tragic that it hasn't. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just thinking of particular children that I've come across and know with, with these polio form deformatives and... Um, it's it's truly wretched, a too, truly wretched disease. Let's get polio eradicated with good use of oral polio vaccines and indeed other 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 polio uh, vaccines. Let's get going with this. Um, let's get going with that as soon as we possibly can. Um, <clears throat> regional reports on measles, with measles cases increasing in all WHO re regions. This is concerning. Measles still kills a lot of children, especially in poorer countries. It is a big risk and should be vaccinated against on a global scale. It's not an mRNA vaccine. In 2021, uh, 25 million children missed out. So th th there is, this is a life-threatening condition. Um, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that children will die as a result of these emissions, unfortunately, and there will be more spread of the disease. Uh, status of new tuberculosis vaccines. Now, tuberculosis is a leading cause of death and a vaccine that prevents the disease in adolescents uh, and adults is urgently needed. A sustained effort to vaccinate uh, to, for vaccine development is underway. Now, I'm a bit confused here because when I was a child, I was vaccinated with the BCG vaccine. And the World Health Organization here appeared to be implying we don't have a vaccine for tuberculosis. They seem to be developing a new one. Now, I'm slightly concerned about this because in South Africa, there is research going on at the moment, not knocking South African medicine, it's good. But in South Africa, there is research going on, just picked a place I know of, for a messenger ribonucleic acid uh, vaccine for tuberculosis, which I find uh, pretty frightening. So quite why they're not using BCG vaccines, I don't know. Um, vaccinologists can certainly let me know about that. But um, it protected us for a long, long time. And the, the idea that the waiting for new vaccines, which probably will be in license, probably more expensive. Hmm. Yeah, anyway, I don't, I, I'm a bit concerned about new things. I like trust, tried and tested. But that's just me, I'm old fashioned. Anyway, so they're saying they need this malaria, of course. Now, this one I'm going to look into, th th this new malaria vaccine. I have no uh, knowledge about that at all, uh, so I will check that out. But I do know that uh, we've recently distributed mosquito nets in um, Uganda, for example, as part of our collaboration with Uganda, and that um, we believe this is already preventing cases on malaria. So um, quite what's happening with the malaria vaccine, we don't know. So there we go. That's the uh, latest wisdom from the World Health Organization that uh, we can be grateful for. So for now, thank you for watching.